Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Formerly known as Master Gunner 75, now is My Hobby 75. I've changed it because shooting sports is not my only hobby. I like to drink whiskey, smoke cigars, drink coffee. So I decided I'm going to maybe add some videos of those things. It's not going to be a review channel. I'm not going to review whiskey, review cigars, review coffee. Uh, there's a bunch of other channels that do that. This is just basically my experiences through my journey in whiskey, coffee, and cigars. And I will also continue to post shooting videos because that is my primary hobby. Okay, so this video is going to be about Andalusia Whiskey Company and the distillery, which I visited about a week ago. Picked up some whiskey, was able to taste some whiskey while I was there. I uh, had a really good time. And I'll throw up some pictures in the video, kind of flash some pictures here and there throughout the video uh, as I'm going through these whiskeys. So I did pick up four different uh, tastings or four different uh, expressions of their whiskey. Uh, the first one here is what they call the white. This right here only comes in the 375 milliliter bottle and they only sell it at their distillery. So you won't find this in stores, plus it's only in Texas. Uh, another thing I like about visiting the distilleries is that I, when I purchase whiskey, I'll date the whiskey, so I'll put a little sticker on it with the date of when I purchased it. And what they do is they'll put their own little sticker on there, try to get the glare out of it. The person that sold it to me, the date they sold it to me. So I think that's pretty cool. I'm not really going to taste this one on the video. It's mainly for making mixed drinks, cocktails, things like that. Uh, I tried it while I was there and it's it just tastes like a clear liquor almost like a tequila or a vodka so Andalusia Whiskey Company they make single malt whiskey they don't make bourbon or just American whiskey uh, all of their whiskeys are single malt so the first one is their triple distilled which is their version of a scotch whiskey uh, there's the bottle there it's got a nice, nice color to it. I did get to taste this while I was there. It's very delicious. There's the back again. There's the sticker when I bought it. And I don't know if this is a law across the United States, but in Texas, distilleries are not allowed to sell more than 1,500 milliliters of spirits to each person every 30 days. So. My wife was with me, so I picked up 1,500 milliliters. She picked up 1,500, which basically ended up two 750 milliliter bottles and then uh, one 750 and then two of these 375s. Also, while I was there, I picked up a Glen Cairn glass, so that was pretty cool. I like to pick up the, uh, when I go to different distilleries. This is only the second one I've been to. Unfortunately, when I went to Balconis. I didn't take any pictures and stuff, so I'll have to go back so I can take some pictures. I did pick up some very good whiskey from them as well. So let's go ahead and uh, start cracking open these bottles, and I'll, uh, as I talk about each one, I'll crack open the bottle, pop the cork, whatever you want to call it, and uh, give them a little taste. So this one again is the triple distilled. Oh yeah. And this time I'm using my Brought a couple of Glen Cairns, got my Magnificent Bastard Glen Cairn. Pour a little bit in here. And give it a little smell and a taste. So again, I'm not going to review these because um, really, I haven't found a whiskey that I don't like. Some are better than others, some are sweet. Some are smoky. There's all kinds of different whiskeys out there, and uh, not that I've tasted all of them, but the ones that I have tasted I like, so I bought them and I keep them in my bar or my cabinet. So there's the triple distilled. These are aged for two years, so they age all of their whiskey for two years before they bottle them. So this one you will find again in stores uh, around Texas. It's just Texas single malt whiskey, triple distilled. The other two that I got are exclusives. You can only pick them up in 
or at the distillery and we'll talk about those so let's take a little nose and a, and a taste of this when you look at it it's very nice it's got some nice legs What's really cool is you don't uh, you don't get that burn on the nose. This is a 50% ABV or 100 proof, so it's not uh, it's not a weak whiskey. Definitely smell the grain. I get a little bit of citrus on here, so I'm not a sommelier, I'm not an expert, I'm not a distiller anything like that just a regular guy that likes whiskey so other people might get more off of this this is just what I'm getting you can definitely feel that uh, 100 proof it's not harsh though at least to me it's not. Uh, again, it's um, fairly oily, which I like. Kind of coats the mouth, coats your tongue. Kind of a medium finish. Getting uh, a little bit of caramel. And then that, uh, that, that grain, that single grain. Uh, it's very delicious. I really like this whiskey. And... Um, Probably not every 30 days, but when it comes time that I need a bottle, I'll go down and visit them again instead of trying to look at the local shops and see who has it. I'll just go straight to the source. Yeah, that's good. If you're not into single malt whiskey, like if you're just into bourbons, things like that, you may not like this because this is not as sweet as a bourbon. But uh, I'm pretty much open to most whiskeys as long as they're not, uh, they don't taste like gasoline. While I take a couple more sips, smelling this some more. Like I said, they're not a very big distillery. They're, they don't have like a big giant rick house. Uh, they actually have a portable container, like the steel portable containers that they keep there or store their, their barrels in. When they first started, they started with 25 gallon barrels. And as they, as the demand grew, they started to transition to the 53 gallon bar barrels. And so as they transition, they also sell barrels. So I'm hoping that I get a barrel from them once. Uh, I think they look really nice. I'm going to use it as an end table in the, in the living room. Um, another thing that I found is, uh, the person that gave me the tour, I have his card here, uh, Tommy Irwin, he's one of the founders. And he also went to the same high school that I went to here in Colleen, Texas. He graduated a couple years after me. I graduated in 93, graduated in 95. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Small world, uh, knowing that somebody from the area uh, is doing something cool like distilling whiskey. So the next whiskey, this one is, uh, again, one of their exclusives that you only get at the distillery. This one is Revenant Oak. It's a peated single malt, so this one's more like Scotch. So it's uh, or they they use the the techniques that uh, uh, that Scottish use to make Scotch. So what's uh, what's different about this one because they sell this in a normal uh, expression, but this one uh, was barreled or finished in a Garrison Brothers bourbon barrel. So you can see that on there. Garrison Brothers Bourbon. It was a, um, or I'm sorry, not a bourbon barrel. Uh, it was a Tawny Port barrel. And this is, trying to get that in focus. This is release number two, bottle number 211 out of 380. So that was pretty cool. So the, again, they do have this Revenant Oak in just their normal expression but then they have these that are finished in different barrels. So I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit of this. Yeah. So I'm just using a normal Glen Cairn, so this time I'm using a different glass. I don't want to mix them up.
So this one's about, even in the bottle, it's about the same color as the, the single malt. Nice and oily, you can see how it's sticking to the glass. This one's also, all of their whiskeys are uh, 50 ABV, 100 proof, even the white. While we were there, it was nice, uh, we got to taste the white straight out of the still, so as it's dripping down, it let us run it, our fingers through and, and taste it, and that was pretty cool. Let me take a little drink of water here. So again, I'm not uh, I'm not a sommelier or an expert, so I'm not going to get uh, crazy things like you know octopus tentacles and things like that. So I hear all kinds of uh, reviewers that get uh, all kinds of weird spices and smells and scents, and so this one is a little a little smoky, but uh, smells very similar to the uh, to the the first one. So I get, I don't know what that is. That might be from those the tawny port barrels. Um, I've had port before. It doesn't actually taste like port, but there's there's something different. And I'm guessing it's from that, that tawny port, but it's really good. It's got a little smokiness to it. So this is peated, um, so it's it's been smoked. And then there are their other smoke uh, smoked whiskey. They use other types of woods like uh, oak and apple and um, other trees, other than uh, other than using peat to smoke it. I do get a little, almost like a like a medicinal taste to it, like you're uh, taking a um, drinking some cough syrup, but not in a bad way. It's just kind of like on the, on the finish. Yeah, it's still good though. I, I like it. This uh, I got to again before I bought these two bottles. They let me taste it, which was pretty cool. Uh, for free, so I guess they you know wanted me to to buy a bottle, which I was going to buy anyway, so that didn't really matter. Yeah, I'm not getting anything out of the ordinary on this. No. The first one had uh, had a little bit of that uh, caramel or brown sugar. This does not have that. This is uh, more, I guess it's that, that peat and that tawny port. Um, it's a lot, I don't want to say harsher, but it, uh, it definitely does a little bit more in your mouth. It almost gives a little tingling on the tongue and, and, and on the palate. But it's still good though. It's a really good sipping whiskey. Go ahead and clean up with some water. Uh, while I was there, I got to see the, they use a, a copper pot still, which is uh, still pretty cool. It's a small, again, a small, I think they're getting uh, a couple hundred bottles out of each barrel. Uh, they use all rainwater, so that's, uh, that's another thing that I like about them, is that they collect rainwater. Uh, all around their building, they have gutters and things like that that they they have their own catchment system, so it's all rainwater. All right, so the last whiskey, this one is the Striker. So um, if you see me looking down, looking at their website, so um, the woods that they use actually to smoke this, 
um, is oak, kind of like like uh, Texas barbecue tradition is what they're saying. Oak, mesquite, and apple woods is what they use to uh, to smoke this one. Uh, and then this one, the primary barrel is number three charred American oak. So um, similar to what would be uh, used in a or what a barrel would be aged in. And then the finishing cask is a treaty oak rum cask. So this is the this is the striker. Again, this is a single malt, 50 ABV, 100 proof. So there you go. It's uh, number three char, American oak. Uh, the finishing cask is Treaty Oak Rum. Uh, and then this is release number three, bottle number 104, out of 249. I think that was 249. Yep. And just like all the other ones, um, which I liked, is they, they put the little sticker on there that has the date that I purchased it and then the initials of the, the person that uh, sold it to me. She was really cool, the bartender. She was uh, very knowledgeable. Told us about uh, the different whiskeys. Even even recommended what I should try while I was there. So when you do a tour there, you also get a choice between a flight of three whiskeys, or you can do a uh, a mixed drink. Or a, um, they have uh, like normal types of. Uh, of mixed drinks or they have uh, what my wife got was uh, was like a slushy so it was a cherry coke type of slush so and that was really good I took a, a taste of that and that was actually really delicious spilled a little bit here but this one I poured in my Andalusia Glencairn this one's a little bit darker than the other two but they all come from the same the same still so these three whiskeys start off as this white. So all of their whiskeys start off as this white and then they age them in the different barrels, finish them in different barrels to get the different uh, expressions. And so right now I think they just have the striker, the revenant oak, and then they're, they're um, triple distilled, but then they do different finishings. And so again, this one, this one is the one that's uh, instead of peated, this one has the the oak. It's the, it's smoked with uh, the grains are smoked with uh, oak, applewood, and mesquite. So and then it's also done in the in American oak, number three char. So you get a little bit of a. It almost smells like a bourbon. Yeah, you're getting like a brown sugar. caramel, maple syrup, those three normal types of uh, smells that you get from most bourbons. And then a little bit of that, uh, that alcohol that, um, you know, almost smells like uh, nail polish remover, but it's not, uh, you know, nail polish remover sounds bad, but it, it doesn't, it's not bad when you smell, it's just, you'll get some of that sweetness, and then you'll get a little, a little hit on the nose from that from the alcohol but it smells really nice it's uh almost as dark as some as some bourbons as well so I'm, I'm a bourbon fan as well so uh, I like wheat uh, weeded bourbons um, corn whiskey straight corn whiskey rye so there's I really again I haven't found a whiskey that I haven't liked yet so I guess I need to try the uh, Johnny Walker Red Label because I've heard that's pretty bad. I haven't tried that yet. All right, so when I took a sip, I kind of breathed in through my nose as I was taking a sip, and it, it kind of smelled like like uh, meat was being smoked or someone was 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 grilling meat which is really good and you get that on the on the palate as well with that sweetness from the from um, like syrup or or brown sugar so it's like you're it's like you're drinking barbecue <laughs> that's that's actually really good I, I like that one a lot So while we were while we were there, 
we walked around uh, and again I was talking earlier about the rainwater so all of the water that they use to uh, to, to do the whole process is rainwater so they catch rainwater and I'll throw a picture up of the of the tank I can't remember how many gallons it's a it's a pretty large tank that they use strictly for that and then they have a smaller tank that they use for like the restrooms and things like that which comes from the city <clears throat> and then uh, again it's uh, it's single grain so they have one silo that they keep all their grains in and another pretty cool thing when we were there they were in the process of peating some malt or some uh, some grains um, and it happened to be that this batch was for uh, the uh, the, the whiskey tribe, the, uh, the Crowded Barrel, just forgot their name for a second, Crowded Barrel Distillery, so it's going to be for them, so that was pretty cool, I got to got to look inside of there, and I'll throw that picture up uh, as well, um, the smell was just so intense when they, they opened up the door, and that, that smoky, that peatiness, that, that was, uh, it was really nice to, to be able to experience that, so um, that's pretty much it for now. Again, like I said, this isn't going to be, uh, I'm not going to rate these or, or give them grades or anything. The only thing that I can say is if you live in Texas, support your local distilleries, you know, go around, uh, check them out, taste their whiskeys. If you live in other states where you have distilleries, whether you like rums or tequilas or because there, there are distilleries here for those as well, whiskeys, things like that, go check them out. Uh, give them a chance. They're, uh, they're usually going to be uh, as good or better than some of the bigger name brands that are out there being sold all around the world. So uh, here's to whiskey and here's to everybody else. Cheers.